Let's get straight to the point. Today we're going to be talking about how to calculate our clearance hole diameters when we use GD&T positional tolerancing. Now to convey the concepts today, I'm actually going to use an assembly, which I'm showing right here. Now in this assembly, I have this lower plate with quarter 20 blind threaded holes. I have an upper plate with clearance holes, and then finally I've got these fasteners coming through, bolting these two plates together. And this is a pretty common mechanical design scenario. Now for this lower plate, I'm detailing that right here in this section view. I've got my lower plate, I have my blind threaded holes, I've got my threaded hole call out, and then I've got my positional tolerance that I'm using to control the locations of those blind threaded holes. Now for this upper plate, I'm detailing that right here in this top view. I've got my plate, my clearance holes, my clearance hole call out, and then finally, once again, I've got my positional tolerance that I'm using to control the locations of those clearance holes. Now you might be asking, why should we calculate our clearance hole diameters rather than relying on those close or free fit values that we can get from our CAD packages, as well as from mechanical design references such as tap drill charts? Well, if you use those standard rule of thumb values and these parts are machined to worst case, when you go to assemble, you could potentially experience interference between the side walls of your clearance holes and the surfaces of your fastener because you use standard values and you didn't calculate your values. By calculating your values, you can know with 100% certainty that you can assemble interference free. Now to begin calculating our clearance hole diameters, we need to know these five values to then calculate these two values. And we can harvest these values from our mechanical design data here. Now the first one is F. This is our max fastener diameter. But we can actually get that from right here in our threaded hole callout. This is our nominal thread size. In this case, it happens to be a quarter inch, so we use 0 0.250. For T1, this is the positional tolerance that we apply to our clearance hole features. In this case, it's 7 thousandths. T2, this is the positional tolerance that we apply here to our threaded features. And in this case, it's 14 thousandths. Now you might be wondering, why do you have 14 and seven? They're different values. Well, that's because simple clearance holes are much easier to control than these more complex threaded features when it comes to their position. So I'm gonna give the machinist and the inspector just a little more wiggle room on these complex threaded features than these more simple clearance holes. Okay, D, this is our minimum thread depth. I told you guys these are blind threaded holes and so as a designer, I need to specify what the minimum thread depth is and so I've done that here. P, our last value, this is our maximum clearance hole length. And we can get that information from up here. Now, our maximum clearance hole length happens to be in this scenario equal to the maximum thickness of this part. And so where do I get the maximum thickness of this part? I get that here from this dimension. Just be aware, the maximum length of your clearance hole doesn't always equal the maximum thickness of the part. If there happened to be a boss up here on the top of this plate, and that clearance hole was drilled through in as well, we need to take into account the maximum thickness of this plate plus that boss. So just be aware of that. Okay, we know what these values are. We can then calculate what these values are, which is our minimum clearance hole diameter, which is the absolute smallest that we can allow these holes to be while still ensuring assembly, fit, function, all interference free. This last value, our nominal clearance hole diameter. This is actually what we're gonna state as our diameter in our clearance hole callout. This is the target that we're gonna give the machinist to drill to. Okay, this is a three-step process, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate this minimum clearance hole diameter. We do that here using this slightly complex formula. We've got F plus T1 plus T2 times this math here inside the parentheses. Okay, F. F is, once again, our nominal thread size. In this case, it's a quarter inch, and so we're gonna plug in 0.250. T1, the positional tolerance that we're applying, 
So our clearance hole features, seven thousandths. T1, seven thousandths. T2, the positional tolerance that we're applying to our threaded holes, 14 thousandths, 14 thousandths. All multiplied by what's happening here inside the parentheses. We've got one plus two times our p-value divided by d. What's our p-value? Remember, p is the maximum length of our clearance feature, or our clearance holes. In this case, it happens to equal the maximum thickness of this part. The maximum thickness of this part is detailed here. 750 plus or minus five, the maximum or upper end of that is 755, and that's what I'm plugging in here for P. The last value, D, once again, that's our minimum thread depth, and I've specified that here for these blind threaded holes, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Okay, you guys can see the math here, where I've got these values, where I've harvested them from. You can follow along with your calculators all the way down to here. Now, quick note, I always round this fourth decimal place up to the next value. This ensures I will be interference free. So I've taken this value and rounded it up to get a final minimum clearance hole diameter of 0.3133. Okay, now for step two, we need to begin building our clearance hole call out. To do that, we need to apply a size tolerance right here. There's a lot of design reference information out there to help you choose a size tolerance. However, I've created this low-cost drill tolerance table for you guys. These are low-cost, easily repeatable tolerances that you can use for your designs. All you need to do is take your minimum clearance hole diameter and just plug it in where it belongs in these range of drill sizes. In this case, 0.3133 belongs right here between 0.201 and 400. So we take this plus seven minus two and simply plug it in here as our size tolerance for this clearance hole call out. Okay, so step two is done. Our last step is step three. We need to now calculate our nominal clearance hole diameter and that's what we're gonna list in here as our clearance hole diameter for our clearance hole call out. To do that, we're going to use this pretty simple formula. Our nominal clearance hole diameter is equal to our minimum clearance hole diameter, which we already calculated, plus the absolute value, it's important, absolute value of the lower size tolerance that we placed right here in our clearance hole callout. So this negative two, we're going to take the absolute value of that. So minimum clearance hole diameter, 0.3133 plus the absolute value of this negative two plus two, we get 0.3153. And this is our mathematical design value. You can feel free to take this value, plug it in here as your clearance hole diameter, and you can be absolutely certain that if these parts are machined to worst case, they will still assemble, fit and function interference free. Now you might be wondering, wait a minute, you said I could plug this mathematical design value in right here. However, your value doesn't match what you calculated, and that's true. What I did was I went one little mini step further. I said, okay, what standard drill bits are available to a machinist? Do they make a drill bit that has a diameter of 0.3153? Unfortunately, no, they do not. So what I do so I select the next larger standard drill bit that's available, and I specify that instead. In this case, the next larger standard drill bit that's available happens to be a letter O drill bit, which has a diameter of 0.316. So this is what I place here into the clearance hole callout. This lets the machinist know, look, I know what standard tools you have available to you. They're gonna easily recognize this number, quickly go grab a letter O drill bit, get it chucked up, and start machining parts. So this is your practical choice, and this is what I apply here in my clearance hole call-out. Okay, everyone, that's calculating clearance hole diameter. Using this method, you can be absolutely certain that if these parts are machined to worst case, the parts will still assemble, fit, and function interference-free. And that's straight to the point.